What's going on? This is Skyland McQueen. It's Anthony's two year old. Whew. It's been very difficult. She's been waking up at two in the morning, asking for her dad to go out of her sleep. She was potty trained. She kept being on herself. 20 minutes prior to him getting murdered, she was on the phone with her dad, FaceTiming, talking to him. They just laughing. He said, I'm here to ride with a friend, Sky. Daddy promised he'll call you back. He loves you. Oh, and that's when goodness. we got the call 20 minutes later that the police didn't kill Anthony. Mm. Woo. Woo. It's been very hard because we are close, like his kids are close. Mm. And that Wednesday after him getting killed, he was supposed to fly to Texas and we was going to drive up to Kentucky and surprise little Anthony at his football game. But that didn't happen. His he was always looking up for it to his dad coming to his football games. Skylin is just, it's just been very hard. She asked for her dad all the time. She's seeing his picture everywhere. She's always like, mommy, that's daddy, we're daddy. And I just gotta tell my two year old he's an angel. Like, no amount of nothing is gonna bring him back. We just need justice. They yes. need to pay for this. Yes. Anthony's name should be known nationwide. Yes. It was unjustified why they killed him. Yeah. He was a father. He was always there for his kids. He loved FaceTime him no matter what was going on or where he was. He made sure he stayed in contact with his kids. And at the end of the day, we got to look in these kids' face every time and tell them their dad is an angel. He's no longer here with them. And it's sad because tomorrow's his birthday. And they, they won't be able to celebrate it with him at all. And it's taking a toll on him. And we're going to remember him and we're going to keep fighting for justice for him and these kids. Yes. They Justice. deserve it. Justice for Anthony McClain. Justice for Anthony McClain. Yes, they deserve Justice it. For Anthony McClain. We just hope that everybody see it out here and we spread his name because this is terrible. Yes. We're praying for you. Thank you. As you reflect on Exhibit 17, I must ask you, is this a trained Minneapolis Police Department defensive tactics technique? It is not. Well, we read the uh, departmental policy on neck restraints. Is this a neck restraint? Um, the conscious neck restraint by policy mentions light to moderate pressure. When I look at Exhibit 17, um, and when I look at the facial expression of, of, of Mr. Floyd, that does not appear in any way, shape, or form that that is light to moderate pressure. So is it your belief then that this particular uh, form of restraint, if that's what you, if that's what we'll call it, uh, uh, in fact violates departmental policy? I absolutely agree that violates our policy. Are you aware now that the defendant maintained this position on George Floyd for nine minutes and 29 seconds? I am aware of that. I believe you testified that force has to be reasonable when it's applied at the beginning and through the entire encounter. Is that right? That is correct. Is what you see in Exhibit 17, in your opinion, within Minneapolis Police Departmental Policy 5-300, authorizing the use of reasonable force it is not and why not that is that is uh it has to be objectively reasonable we have to take into account uh, the circumstances information the threat to the officer the threat to others um and we um the severity of that uh, so that is not uh, part of our policy that is not what we teach and uh, that should be condoned. When do you believe, or do you have a belief as to when this restraint, the restraint on the ground that you viewed should have stopped? Once Mr. Floyd, and this is based on my viewing of the, the, the videos, um, once Mr. Floyd had stopped resisting, and certainly once he was, um, uh, in distress and trying to verbalize that, um, that that should have stopped. Um, there's there's an initial reasonableness in trying to just get him under control over the in the first few seconds, but but uh, once there was no longer any resistance, and clearly when Mr. Floyd was no longer responsive and even motionless to 
continue to apply that level of force to a person proned out, handcuffed behind their back, um, that that in no way, shape, or form is anything that um, uh, is by policy, is not part of our training, and it is certainly not part of our ethics or our values. Touch the area that you would call your flank on your body. On your body, it would be right here. It'd be between the two areas. So, towards the rib cage. Right. And, and okay. so but it's side of the body, not in the back. Yeah. Right. So, but to some, what's the difference? Okay. But from a doctor's perspective, the flank is the flank is the flank. Uh, directly, I think when we talk about the back, it's your back completely. So you have no turning, no nothing. It might be considered a complete run. And that can be problematic for everybody when we see that. Was there an exit wound? Yes, through the chest. Okay, so the trajectory of the bullet came through the body and exited through yep, the chest. Correct. So does that suggest that he may have been shot from behind? No, the entry room decides uh, where he was shot at. So, I mean, so that's what we need. Yeah, from the, from the flank coming out. So I, more of that will be needed by the autopsy. We don't have a security clearance or a hold on on the uh, on the uh, autopsy report, which is new, right? What yeah. do we always do, man? You was for a year. That's not happening. Yeah. Okay. So, so you're not putting an administrative hold. No, on. no, no, no. You're giving me your word. You're not yes, sir. Mm-hmm. Jason, am I right on that? Yeah, no hold. Okay. Oh, and you, you're keeping the investigation in house. Yes. So I need to finish up the traffic stop, but but to get to that point, and please, this is the neat part about not having a million media people when we get back on point and have our, our community discussion in here. But um, by us having our investigation, number one, we have video, so you can't hide the facts, number one. I, I just don't think when you have video, you can say something other than what occurred. Number two, I'm able to engage you like this. We're able to release the video, and we are able to have uh, communication with the council, with the community, with the press, to have these occur. That's why I think this is important for us to do our own investigation. That is not going to happen. Next year when the DOJ comes in to do local investigations, I worry for law enforcement that they're going to lose that ability to have this, this communication or this contact. But that's something we have to deal out later. Under the sheriffs. Right. So, so there's no hold on this autopsy report. Right? There's no hold on this thing. And, and the commander will ensure that continues forward. So when you said he was turning, Oh, we don't know if he was turning. Okay. Well, so you can see him on the on, on the video begin to turn his head, and, and his and his gun begins to fall. So he's turning, intent. but I don't know how far. Right. You don't know what his intent is. I'm, right. so I'm not saying he's turning to turn. Right. So, so the debate's going to be for us. I want to shift the debate from no gun shot in the back to decide as a community should he be a shot in that situation. I get legally we have a complete process that occurs, right? We have a a criminal investigation, a district attorney's investigation, an administrative investigation, and I did call and the city manager agreed that we will have an independent investigation as well. These These are four investigations that will take place.